Hello Cyber Denizen, thank you for stopping by. Today will be a couple of firsts. Number one, this will be my first YouTube video. And number two, as you can see, today will be the first time I'm building my own computer from scratch. You might be wondering, why go through such a poor unfortunate folly of building your own computer? Well, I have uh, been um, dabbling in video and photo editing for quite a while now and in the last six months or so I'm finding that I'm getting more and more into it and getting more and more um, uh, video and editing work and so um, the PC setup that I have at the moment uh, is I have I had it for more than six years now. Um, it's an Intel i5, which is only four cores, and um, it's just not working. Um, as the videos and the photos that I'm I'm uh, editing, they get more and more complex, and as well as the resolution has gone up. So I'm now. Um, editing uh, 4k videos and my current setup is just not working it's it's just stuttering and dropping frames and skipping frames sometimes it freezes sometimes uh, it just shuts down and it's like a lame kangaroo hobbling from one 4k frame to another 4k frame and sometimes just disappearing altogether so um, I just had to upgrade and uh, if you follow the um, tech industry news as well as the gaming world this year has been well apart from many things this year has been an annus horribilis in terms of upgrading your computer parts or trying to build a new computer because all the components and all the parts uh, well most of them anyways are either non-existent or they are scarcer than a hen's tooth but i just need to um, upgrade my computer because um, otherwise i wouldn't be able to do the work that i need to do so without further ado let's get on with it the first thing you need to decide is what kind of form factor your com you want your computer to be. I've decided to go for the Mini ITX, uh, which is the smallest format. Uh, as you can see, it is relatively small, but there are other cases smaller than this. So this is the NZXT H210i. Um, there's a tempered side glass that you open to get to the insides. Uh, another reason why I chose this case is because it has a front panel USB-C socket. So it's just the right size, not too big and not too small. Let's get to the motherboard. This is the Asus ROG Strix B550i gaming motherboard. I chose this because it has a front panel USB-C socket as well as an M.2 PCIe Gen 4 SSD slot. So it's uh, ready for the AMD Ryzen 5000 series processors. Uh, it has uh, two M.2 uh, SSD slots. The one in front is PCIe Generation 4. At the back, you have uh, various USB ports as well as an onboard Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth and a BIOS uh, flashback button, which is very handy. At the back, you have the second M.2 SSD slot, uh, but this is PCIe Generation 3 but still fast enough. It's a very good motherboard with everything laid out logically as well as a beautiful logo in front. Next, the most important part of your build, the CPU. The AMD Ryzen 9 5900X. It has 12 cores and 24 threads, one of the most powerful CPUs that you can get at, in the market today. It's amazing for video editing work uh, as well as motion graphics work uh, and 3D rendering. But if you are using your computer only for gaming, it's probably going to be overkill. Um, it has a base clock of 3.7 gigahertz and a maximum boost of 4.8 gigahertz. With such a powerful CPU, you need a powerful CPU cooler. And this is the Noctua NHD15S Chromex. It is an absolute beast of a CPU cooler. 
It has twin fin towers with one NFA15 Noctua fan. You can attach a second fan if you like. They provide you with the uh, extra clips. The maximum height uh, of this with the fan on is 160 millimeters, and that is uh, quite big actually uh, for an ITX uh, computer case form factor. The most important feature is the uh, asymmetrical heat pipes um, layout at the bottom uh, so that uh, the cooler clears the PCIe slot that sits very close to the bottom of the CPU. Next, the second most important part of your build, but also this year, the most difficult one to get, your graphics card. This is the NVIDIA RTX 3070. It's uh, more than ample for productivity and creativity work, and if you're gaming at 1440p. Uh, this is the new Ampere architecture with 5,888 CUDA cores, and it has 8GB of VRAM. Um, this has been a difficult year to get uh, any graphics card and I'm quite thankful to get this at retail price from a reputable company. So it does uh, ray tracing and DLSS very well if you're into gaming. And uh, it has one HDMI 2.1 port and three DisplayPort 1.4a. So your graphics card will uh, help you to quicken the rendering of your video edits as well as your 3D uh, motion graphics. And this um, GPU comes with uh, an adapter from an 8-pin uh, power cable to a 12-pin GPU socket. Next is the heartbeat of your computer build, the power supply. This is the Corsair RM850X. It uh, supplies a maximum of 850 watts of power to your build, um, and uh, it is a very good um, power supply. Very quiet, and it supplies a very clean and stable power. Um, I think it's an overkill for uh, what I'm building, uh, but uh, I got it at a very good price um, about a few months ago. Uh, at the moment, anything that's more than 750 watts, uh, the prices have shot through the roof. Um, so the, uh, plenty of connectivity, it's uh, fully modular, and uh, you can just uh, plug in all, all the cables that you need. Next, computer memories. The Crucial Ballistics 32GB, 32,000MHz RAM. When it comes to productivity and creativity work, it's more about size than speed. So 32,000 megahertz is fine, but you do need at least 32 gigabytes of RAM. Storage drive. This is the Sabrent Rocket NVMe 1TB SSD. It has the latest PCIe 4 interface and it comes in a very nice box. Uh, it's a really small form factor. It's like a chewing gum stick. Uh, it reads data up to 5,000 megabits per second and it writes data up to 4,400 megabits per second. It's uh, really amazing how much technology has uh, been crammed into such a small form factor and is blazing fast as well. This will be my main uh, storage drive for all my video and photo raw materials. The Western Digital Black SN750 NVMe SSD. This is the 500 gigabytes version and it has the slightly slower PCIe 3 interface. Uh, and this is where uh, all my Windows 10 and software programs will sit and launch from. Uh, these programs, uh, because they are not intensive read and write, they do not need to have the fastest uh, SSD in the market. Next, the three SATA SSDs, the Samsung 860 EVO, the SanDisk and the Aceno. Uh, the SanDisk will be my scratch disk and the other two will be my storage disk. They do not need to be the fastest in the market because um, they, I do not need them to read or write uh, really fast. Next, the chassis fans, the fans for your computer case. I have two models of the Noctua Chromax fans here and I have two of each. The first is the NFA14. It has a square frame of 140 millimeters uh, in diameters and uh, it has the anti-vibration pads which you can change the colors of. Uh, the, the pads come in different colors. The uh, A14 has a little sibling and that is the NFF12. 
it has uh, 120 millimeters in diameter and again the pads can be swapped in colors uh, the a14 the two of them uh, will be in the front of the case one of the f12s will be at the back of the case and the other will be on the cpu cooler fan splitter cables this uh, came with the case itself and this will be for the front two fans and this is a generic uh, splitter and this will be for the two cpu cooler fans power supply extension cables it's purely for aesthetic purposes uh, i went for these because i'm going for the white and red combination cable ties and velcros this is to tidy up all your computer cables
So, there you have it. Candy Cassidy. It's been a steep learning curve as well as extensive research into all the components that um, go into Candy Cassidy. But I'm glad that I did it because now I can edit 4K videos and ultra high resolution photos without feeling like a lame kangaroo hobbling from one frame to another frame. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.